quite well. It has finally stopped raining in Montreal. So we are headed from the hotel to the Jazz Fest press room. We're gonna pick up our credentials and try to schedule some interviews. And hopefully I can show you what it's like in the press room. Musicians are popping in and out, journalists are popping in and out, interviews are being conducted. It's a pretty cool scene. Also get an early peek at uh, just the downtown festival core, which is where all the action takes place. And yeah, check in later as we start getting to some concerts. Uh, tonight is Stacy Kent, a rare performance with a symphony orchestra, so that should be pretty cool. And then I believe we've got George Benson tonight as well. Probably be playing some material from his new album. It's a tribute to uh, early rock and roll. So, yeah, we'll see you over there. And thanks for following along with this video travelogue. All right, and we're coming up now to La Stral, which is a, actually a club. But uh, above the club is a dedicated press room where all the journalists can go and hang out. Um, you need credentials to get in there, so if you do come visit, don't think you can, you know, just make a stop by. But uh, yeah, this is kind of the nerve center for all the journalists, broadcasters here at the Montreal Jazz Fest. So we'll hop in there now and uh, see who we can see. It's early; it's uh, 11 a.m., so things are just waking up around here after a late night of music, but. Better to get a good jump on it. Well, the press room was closed. Um, they don't open till noon. It's about 11 o'clock here. So while we wait, I'm gonna stroll through Chinatown, which is near the hotel, um, and go to my one of my favorite coffee shops in town. It's called Kakapo. Uh, and you'll see why it's good coffee. Fast car goes by. It's good coffee and um, Good baked goods, and they have a huge collection of vinyl that they spin um, in the cafe, so you can kind of eat a sip of coffee and listen to vinyl. One of the guys that works there is a big jazz head, so he's always playing like Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, that kind of stuff. We're going to stroll through Chinatown. Um, I'll show you a little bit of that. Here's the entrance, and then uh, head on over to Pacabo. So yeah, Montreal has an awesome Chinatown. A um, lot of good restaurants, tea shops, bakeries, and it's pretty big. It's next to the downtown city center and uh, just in between that and the river, the old city. So, yeah, this is the Chinatown. It extends for a couple blocks. This is just one arm of it on Boulevard St. Laurent, which... Um, driver yesterday told me who took me from the airport told me it's like like international boulevard it gets you know every kind of immigrant group that came to Montreal has a presence along this boulevard so we're making our way through Chinatown into uh, into the old city we're gonna get Pacabo here's duck poultry We will see you when we get to the coffee shop. Cool, so here we are in front of Pacabo Cafe. We're gonna go in while we wait for the press room to open, get some coffee, get a pastry, and see what vinyl they're spinning. All right, yeah, so we're inside Pacbo. As I mentioned, great coffee, great food, and the vinyl. You see Art Blake, the jazz messenger, is peeking out back there. My man Yannick is baking up some fresh cookies. And this is where I come every morning. Get my coffee. Yannick, what are we spinning, man? It's uh, GID. Nice. Yeah. And what kind of table is that? What kind of turntable? Nice. Cool, man. How long have you been in business? Uh, two years. Two years. No, four years. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to celebrate our four years like in one week. And this shop was open uh, one year ago. 
Congrats, man. I remember I was in last time, you were spinning some Ella yeah. and some Lewis. Yeah. A lot of jazz. Yeah, man. In the morning and the weekend. So, yeah, I remember you. Man. Dig it, man. It was nice. Well, thanks for having an awesome shop. Thank you. We're going to send you. some jazz fans up here. It's for a nice customer like you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Thank you. All right, so this is in the press room. Jazz Press HQ, so to speak. Promised I'd show you around here. Um, a little quiet now because the festival hasn't really kicked off yet, but this is where a lot happens. Um, stories get filed, interviews get conducted. This is where the magic happens, and there's a bar. So, yeah, this is where we spend a lot of our time. And uh, the journalists get together and hang. You may hear some interviews we conduct from in here later today. And uh, we'll get to those in a bit. Meanwhile, for right now, it's back into the streets to see what's happening there. All right, so things are just starting to come alive here on the main strip. Uh, some early performances in the free outdoor stages starting up. Know who this is, but we'll check it out. So this is what happens: you just come across a set, stand and listen for a little while, enjoy the music, stay for as long as you want, and then off to something else. Cool, that was a uh, sound check for the group Lowdown Brass Band. They'll be performing on that stage tonight at 9.30, and they're just running through things, making sure everything's all right with the sound. Uh, sound pretty good to me. They, uh, they're they from Chicago, but they definitely got a great New Orleans vibe as they start back up in the background. Very cool. Nice Latin groove, but they also bring some of that Chicago soul. Um, maybe we'll check them out tonight. Meanwhile, I'm going to walk through the uh, the food vendors here so we can see what's going on there. All right, so as the low down brass band performs in the background, walk down the uh, main thoroughfare here and see what there is to see. Here's a piano that you can anyone can just sit down on and play. I heard uh, Heart and Soul on there a little bit earlier. Got some nice classical music going on now. Next to, of course, the Heineken pop-up bar, the jazz bar. Gotta have that. So lots of pop-up restaurants, bistros. You can get, of course, your poutine. That would be French fries with gravy and cheese curds. Kind of a staple of Montreal cuisine. Heavy fare, take it from me. And yeah, the turnout is pretty good. People 
are coming out of the woodwork now that the rain has passed. There's a you can create your own beat here by moving these glass orbs around. It's pretty cool. So yeah, lots of stuff to do. Bring the whole family out. A lot of young people here, a lot of kids, which is awesome to see for a jazz festival. Um, again, as we just continue down Food Avenue here. Got seafood, fish and chips, lobster rolls, wine bar. Cafes galore. The merch stand coming up where you get your Montreal t shirts, sunglasses, tote bags, all that good stuff. And yeah, that's where it happens. They sell CDs by the artists, so they're screening the. Uh, Blue Note, the new Blue Note documentary for Blue Note's 80th anniversary. We've got a lot of ECM stuff on hand for uh, ECM's 50th anniversary. And uh, Brian Adams will be performing. Here's the merch. All the CDs by performers. All the Montreal Jazz Fest merch. And then you come out of it. It's really, it's nice. It's concentrated in the downtown area. It makes it very easy, very accessible. And when you have good weather, like we do today, really hard to beat. So, I'm gonna grab some lunch and then we'll be out to hear some music later tonight. All right, well, we're on our way to see Linda Mahano, the basis. We had to take the Metro to get there because it's, uh, here it goes. It's like the It's like the fastest metro I've ever seen, I swear. Um, this concert is taking place in Verdun, which is a little bit outside of the city center, so we had to travel a bit to get there. Linda's got a new album out called Adventurine on Biophilia Records. So it's probably going to be, be playing material from that. So we'll check out that concert. And then um, we're going to have an interview with her afterwards. So be sure to check that out on jazzes.com um, later in the week. And like I said, I can't show you the actual concert, but we can get as close as we can. And then I'll have a review for you afterwards. So onward and upward to the set by Linda Mayhano. So check this out, you get out of the metro, you turn around, and there's the stage, right there, where we're going to see a set by Linda Mayhano. So that's convenient. It's like a little Montreal outpost in a kind of neighborhood of Montreal. It's called Verdun. Got, of course, the Heineken bar set up. Got vendors all up and down the street. And this is where we're gonna see Linda May Hano. She's got her base set up and everything. This set is about to start in like five minutes. Beautiful night. It's coming on five o'clock. And great weather for jazz.
Tejano. That was a beautiful set. She plays with such feeling, um, with such soul and so much empathy. And the connection with her bandmates is just incredible. She played a lot from her previous two albums, Aventurine and uh, Walk Against Wind. And it's a lot of very cool, odd-metered stuff, a lot of long, extended chords, harmonies that the band can just sprawl out on and go nuts. Um, but also some really tender moments as well. Um, played acoustic bass and stand-up bass. And uh, let's see who was in the band. Rudy Royston on drums, Matthew Stevens on guitar, Fabian Almazan on piano, and uh, did I already say Matthew Stevens on guitar? If not, he was there. Um, yeah, it was a it was a wonderful set. Some beautiful solo passages on stand up bass where she was literally like singing through her horn, and then some literal singing. Um, she uses wordless vocals a lot, kind of like the Pat Metheny group, uh, of which she's now a member, um, just to really kind of haunting effects, they, like pierce right to your soul. Um, Linda Mejano is definitely an artist to look out for. She made our list of the artists you have to know for 2019 one of the artists to watch. Um, go check out her stuff. She's got a new record. It's Aventurine out on Biophilia Records. And that label's really cool. They don't actually sell a CD. They sell a folded packet um, with all kinds of artwork and, and, and poetry and writing on there. Um, and then you download the CD. It's, it's a very eco-friendly way of, of selling a physical product. So yeah, we're about to head to see Stacy Kent and we're going to get back on the Metro and I'll see you over there. Alright, we're now in the beautiful... Las Des Arts, <coughs> going in to see Stacy Kent. We'll pick up our tickets and line inside. As the symphony warms up, I also want to make sure we get a look at that pipe organ. Really a beautiful venue here where Stacy Kent will perform. Great interpreter of the Great American Songbook, French chanson, Bossa Nova, she does it all. We're hearing them tune up uh, in the background. Yeah, this is really a gorgeous venue. So stay tuned as Stacy Kent is about to perform. All right, and we are emerging from the Place des Arts after seeing shows by Stacy Kent. Um, after that, I saw Antonio Sanchez, the drummer, his group Migration, and then set by Robbie Coltrane and his quartet. They were all amazing. Um, Stacy, you know, is incredible. Her voice is just so clear, uh, so pure, and she was singing you know, a lot of great. Bossa Nova songs and, you know, songs from the Great American Songbook, some French chanson, originals, um, and she's great with her quartet, you know, her husband, uh, Jim Tomlinson, plays sax in it and arranges and produces a lot of the songs, um, but with the symphony, it's just added so much more depth and nuance. Um, you know, it's like watching a movie and then putting on the 3D glasses. You know, you just, everything stands out a little bit more. Um, and it's a little more emotional and visceral. So that was great. Antonio Sanchez, he was with his group Migration, um, which just released an album, uh, I think it's called Lines in the Sand, if I remember correctly. And um, that was great too. It was very timely because uh, the album deals thematically with immigration. Um, Antonio is from Mexico and he just recently became a citizen um, but thematically the, the album deals with the immigrant experience and what it feels like to come to a place and not necessarily be treated with dignity and, and respect so uh, the music was super intense and super powerful Antonio of course did the, the score for Birdman the all drum score so Everything he plays is super powerful, super muscular, super intense, but all in the service of the music. And then Ravi, it's you know, it's almost a spiritual experience with him. Um, he plays jazz that's just right on the cusp of straight ahead and free and out there. So I'm very tired. It looks like Low Down Brass Band just let out. You can see from behind me a lot of people coming out on the square, off to the bars. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm tired, but I got one more show tonight. And it's by the drummer Micaiah McCraven. So uh, I'm excited for that. It's back at Jay Sue. I'll let you know how it is after it's done. All right, and yeah, I'm back at the hotel. Micaiah's set was awesome. A lot of great energy. You know, his whole thing is that he, um, for his previous albums, he records a live set. And then in post-production, we'll add all kinds of cool, you know, effects and stuff like that. So he had a great ensemble with him. All cats from Chicago, uh, saxophone player, bassist, keyboardist, um, and they were jamming out. It was really a lot of great energy. And uh, if you're not hip to Micaiah's stuff, you got to go check out um, his albums. I think the last one was called uh, Universal Beings. And it's been out for a little while, but definitely worth grabbing. So that does it for me for uh, what is night two. I'll have another video in store for day three tomorrow. Be sure to uh, follow us on YouTube and visit jazzes.com, J-A-Z-Z-I-Z.com to subscribe. Pick yourself up a print subscription. All right, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.